Einstein reportedly once said, nothing ever happens until something moves. Maybe not as memorable as the equal mc squared comment, but the statement about movement is certainly true for extended reality. Hello, my name is Kirk Barker, and I'm the product manager for Presence Platform's Movement Software Development Kit. Our goal in providing the Movement SDK is to bring your physical movements into the virtual you. I'm here at Connect to announce a revolutionary addition to Movement SDK's body tracking capabilities. Why is body tracking important? Body movement is core to the feeling of immersion in virtual reality. It gives you a reason to stay engaged in the experience because active movement makes you suspend disbelief and immerse yourself into the virtual world. You can exercise on top of a volcano, spar with a medieval knight, or even pick a fight in a bar. Social apps can be more engaging, combat apps more realistic, and fitness apps can utilize full body movements. Last year at Connect, we announced eye tracking, face tracking, and upper body movement tracking based on the headset and controllers or hands. This year, we are completely revamping our body tracking solution with two game-changing features. First, using the cameras on the headset to track the upper body, we are releasing the first ever vision-based body tracking integrated in a VR device. This allows for a much greater fidelity of movement than was possible for before. Second, with the advancements in artificial intelligence, we can generate leg movements that look natural and improve immersion with no extra effort from the developer. More on both of those later. With our new offerings, Movement SDK brings the power of a motion capture studio and packs it into your VR headset. Right out of the box, you can track the upper body with no additional sensors and get a realistic lower body estimation, fulfilling the requirements for many apps, including social, adventure, and casual gaming. I would now like to introduce you to my colleague, Ling Ling Tao, to go more into detail on the body tracking improvements we are announcing here at Connect. Thanks, Kirk. As a research science manager at Meta, over the last few years, my job has been to see this project through from idea to execution. To date, our body tracking solutions purely rely on estimating your body pose based on the headset and controller or hand locations, also known as three-point tracking. As Kirk mentioned, for the first time ever, we're able to exclusively use cameras on the headset to track your body. Today, we'd like to announce the launch of Inside Out Body Tracking, or IOBT, an industry-first vision-based approach. From the headset cameras, we can detect the position of the wrists, elbows, shoulders, and torso joints. This allows us to create a much more natural and accurate tracking system. This will improve the user's feeling of embodiment their presence when in social apps with friends and coworkers, as well as their capability to use more complex body movements in gaming and sports. With three-point tracking, it was impossible to distinguish certain movements. For instance, links forward and back were not detectable because the tracking was tied to the position of the headset. This resulted in characters not being able to peer over a cliff or look over the edge of a building. With IOBT, the position of the collider can stay associated with the character's base so that they naturally peer over edges without falling. Another example of the improvements are elbow motions. In this video, both characters were animated at the same time with exactly the same motion. As the controllers are relatively stable while the elbows go up and down, there's a little elbow movement with three-point tracking on the right, while IOBT on the left captures the fall motion. Accurate elbow placement provides more plausible character movement and new fighting and exercise capabilities. Inside-out body tracking also improves the body tracking experience when used together with hand tracking by inferring the elbow and wrist information. This enables tracking of a wider range of motions and capturing more natural movements for fitness, sports, and social. 
Now, I'd like to show you this working in action. Using IOBT makes a huge difference in advanced motions like jumping jacks, shoulder presses. Notice that in this video, when you exercise in motions like jumping jacks, the hands and the body follow the natural motion even when they are out of view. It also helps in sports motions like tennis or shooting a basketball, where the arms and hands go out of view or suffer from occlusion. Tackling hand tracking loss also leads to a big improvement in social experience. You will now be able to drive your character with your own motions more naturally. You can walk around, cross your arms, or even say a big hi without having to worry about your character losing tracking. IOBT also provides more natural tracking of elbows and torso. Notice that when the actor bends forward, the character on the right really leans forward. Leaning to the side is tracked naturally instead of the character moving sideways. Elbow movements and even elbow strikes are now tracked well. To me, I think this is a game changer for body tracking in VR. With more accurate upper body tracking, smoother and more natural social experience, and enhanced tracking fidelity, developers will be able to take their work to the next level and create an even better experience for the end users. After discussing upper body, now I'd like to introduce Vibo, who is going to talk to you about legs. Hi, my name is Vibor Saxena, and I am the product manager for body tracking. In addition to the IOBT capabilities that Ling Ling just talked about, today, we are excited to announce the most awaited feature, legs. Now, legs are a really hard problem to solve. People in the industry have tried to solve them in a variety of approaches, ranging from wearable that you put all over your body to cameras that you put all over your room. Now, these approaches are great for accuracy for power use cases, but the cost of such devices and the user friction make them inaccessible for the vast majority of normal use cases where legs are just doing basic things like standing, walking, or sitting. We really wanted legs to be something that are available to all users. And with the recent advancements in AI, we think we can do this without any additional hardware or user friction. We call this approach generative legs. Generative legs use the information of your upper body combined with cutting edge AI to generate what your lower body might be doing. This approach works with three point body tracking and also with inside out body tracking you can see the natural leg movement in common social poses like standing, sitting, or walking. You can see how naturally the character moves. It can also do advanced fitness motions like jumping, ducking, or even squatting. It also works well for upper body led sports like boxing, table tennis, or even cricket. The AI that we've built for this provides much more natural and human-like results than using IK-based approaches, which provide rigid and wooden-like legs. Now, we want to be very clear. These are generated legs and not actually tracked legs. That means if you're doing something that cannot be guessed from your upper body motion, the legs will not actually reflect the actual motion. As you can see, when the actor lifts his leg, the character does not reflect this movement. Similarly, while sitting and crossing your legs, the motion isn't reflected. Now, despite its limitation, we believe generative legs will take full body experiences to a vast majority of users due to no additional cost and no user friction. We are excited to share that generative legs will be available on MetaQuest 3, MetaQuest Pro, and even MetaQuest 2.
And now, to showcase how easy it is to use the newly improved body tracking features in your app through Movement SDK, I would like to bring back on stage Kirk. To show how easy it is to animate a character using the Movement SDK, I'd like to take you through the process using the SDK and the GitHub samples. The Unity project I'm showing here already contains the Oculus Integration SDK and the movement samples. I'll start by duplicating one of the sample scenes distributed from GitHub and name it Connect Demo. To simplify this scene, I'll go to the upper window and delete all the UI aspects, but leave the first person view as the blue robot under the armature skinning update retargeting component. We have the standard setup for Oculus camera rig, so using the inspector, I'll enable hands and controllers, require body tracking, and request body tracking permissions on app startup. I'll now import the humanoid character from an FBX file into the project. You'll probably have a model directory in, into which you would import it, but we'll just let this one import into the assets directory. Using the inspector window, we'll scale down the character to match the size we want in our scene, select the rig tab and change to the animation type to humanoid, and hit apply. Select configure for the muscles and settings to enable the translation DOF. We'll then select the materials tab and export the textures. Finally, fix any issues that appear with the textures. At this point, we can drag the model into the scene by selecting and just dragging it over towards the main character. We'll offset it slightly and rotate it by 180 degrees to face us so that we can see what's going on. At this point, we can use the one click to add all of the objects necessary for body tracking. We'll go over into the body tracking components and to enable generative legs, we'll select full body in the retargeting layer and OVR body components, and we'll select high fidelity to enable inside-out body tracking. Now, our body tracking skeleton is modeled after the human body, so by default, there is a 60-degree rotation between the hips and legs. We'll automatically add an adjustment to compensate for this. The spine in our tracking skeleton is slightly curved to match the human spine, so we'll add three more adjustments to align the character's spine to the spine bone. The spine bone will take a five-degree rotation, chest bone 355, and upper chest 335. These values are dependent upon the scale of the character and spine placement, as well as artistic intent, so we don't populate these adjustments with a one-click. That's all there is. We'll press play, and you're ready to go. As we go into the headset, you can see the character animating in front of us. You can also see the blue arms and hands from the first-person robot. Of course, for complicated rigs, you might need to add additional constraints, soft bones, or other touches, but for basic body tracking, this will give you a good start. The previous scene was a pretty simple example. We've also created a reference game which has a much higher quality of production it shows you the dynamic gameplay made possible by inside-out body tracking and generative legs. In this level, the user is playing dodgeball and avoiding the red balls that are flying at them. The trick is to dodge these balls at the same time as you block the soccer balls. The gameplay requires the user to bend at the waist, squat, and move side to side. Please focus on how natural the gameplay looks as they dodge into a squat or contort to avoid a ball. Let's watch.
I don't know if you noticed the Jumbotron showing the highlights. The movement from the gameplay was stored locally and then used to re-render the motions for these highlights. This is a pretty cool way to highlight the best clips and shows the flexibility of receiving the skeletal information. Obviously, this could be serialized and transmitted across the network for animation of remote characters. If it looks this natural in these complex settings, you can imagine how much easier it is than in a normal social environment where you're just walking or sitting. I would like to introduce you to a few partners who have been involved in the evaluation of inside-out body tracking and generative legs during development. First, I would like to introduce you to Jennifer Blake from Supernatural to talk about the importance of body tracking for fitness. Good afternoon. As the Fitness Insights Manager on the product team at Supernatural, it's my mission to make sure our athletes' exercise experience is not only fun and enjoyable, but beneficial, safe, and effective. If you're not yet super familiar, Supernatural is the VR fitness program taking athletes to exhilarating locations where they can sweat to music they love. If you're like me and most others in your pursuit of better health and fitness, you want to feel empowered by your fitness regimen and know you are purposefully moving towards your goal in every workout. Supernatural currently offers our athletes two types of feedback, accuracy and power scores. But our athletes have told us, because we don't offer feedback on their movement quality in Supernatural, they remain uncertain about their exercise form and how they might perform better. Whether they are or aren't doing it right, without feedback, our athletes question themselves and even the effectiveness of Supernatural. Not great. So recently, our research teams are working on ways to provide our athletes clear, valuable, and actionable feedback on both their form and technique. IOBT technology is a tool that can help us address this gap. With IOBT, we can pick up things like the angle of the sternum, orientation of the hips and elbows, and even shoulder positions. Knowing these relationships, we have the potential to provide feedback for the athlete both during and after their workout. This feedback is important for so many reasons. When feedback is tailored, it deepens the athlete's connection with Supernatural. Knowing you're getting it right feels empowering and inspires confidence in movement. Feedback is also actionable and guiding. It gives us a benchmark for progress. With feedback, we engage, grow, and cultivate greater consistency. We are more accountable to our workout regimen because we are motivated by our innate human desire to improve. Now, let's take a look at how we can track body positioning with IOBT. This is Coach Rainier working out in our flow modality. You can see how he's squatting and moving side to side to stay within the triangles, plus a little something extra. Now, when he moves into side lunges, his upper body stays centered above his hips, and his head is directly over his shoulders. His weight is shifted onto his leg, and his core is engaged to help keep his spine stable, all of which is really good form. When is the right moment to provide feedback? Athletes don't want to be distracted during their workout, and anything that distracts them from hitting targets, well, that might take them out of the immersive experience. We're also asking, what is the right amount of feedback to give? And is it better during or after? Some answers could be feedback during rest periods between songs, or maybe a summary at the end of a workout, or a whole new training mode specifically around form. This may give us the opportunity to give our athletes information when they aren't distracted and are able to absorb and learn from it. Lastly, we're asking what feedback is most impactful and useful to our goal, athlete's goal and workout experience. We want to balance meaningful, relevant feedback that is easy for the athlete to understand with an experience that also elicits joy. No one wants to be overwhelmed with information where they don't want or need it, but everyone wants to feel supported in their workout journey. We are so pumped 
for the potential of IOBT's impact on our supernatural athletes. IOBT gives us a path to increase human performance in exercise in virtual reality. And with that knowledge comes power, strength, and motivation for our athletes to do their best. Thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. The use of IOBT in tracking your own body movement promises to have a lot of applicability in fitness apps. Next, I'd like to show you a trailer, trailer of Swordsman, a VR game designed to emulate real-world swords play from a team dedicated to creating immersive combat experience. Then we'll hear from Alex Sin, the CEO of Sin Studio, about Presence Platform's movement SDK in Swordsman. They're using inside-out body tracking and generative legs in Swordsman VR. This is a really fun game that allows you to fight in a gladiator-style combat. Alex? Hi, my name is Alex Sin. I'm the CEO and Creative Director at Sin Studio. Let's take a look at how Presence Platform's Movement SDK will power the future of Swordsman and VR Melee Combat. Don't be fooled by these arms. This goes far beyond hand tracking. These are my real arms in virtual medieval armor, with the kind of lifelike output we get by using a combination of inside-out body tracking, or IOBT, and full body synthesis, or FBS. It's a powerful display of AI in Meta's Movement SDK, creating full body poses with accurate upper body tracking in real time using only a headset. It's one of the most immersive experiences I've personally had since the first time I tried VR. Seeing my body mirrored in this medieval world opened my mind to endless possibilities. Let's take a look at one example. You're stranded on a ship in the middle of the ocean, forced by pirates to walk the plank. For the first time in my experience, I can lean over the edge and look down without my character walking forward, only to fall off. We use the same technique to allow players to dodge projectiles like arrows in slow motion and punches in hand-to-hand -hand combat by leaning side to side. But Swordsman is about swordplay, and the movement SDK delivers unprecedented immersion in our genre. As the saying goes, a sword is an extension of your arm. But this is only true if your arm is an extension of your body. And with IOBT, it is. The problem with traditional IK systems is that they inherently make a lot of assumptions about your body and your arms. When you're in a duel, the last thing you want is fake IK arms blocking your view. Now, my arm gets in the way only when my real arm gets in the way, giving me full control and autonomy in engaging my opponents as myself. Next, I'd like to show you a clip from Pedro Cayet, who is the CEO of VR Monkey. He's explaining the use of IOBT and generative legs in Drunken Bar Fight. First, we'll see a trailer from the video, and then Pedro will discuss the experience with Movement SDK. Drunken Bar Fight is a simple, immersive, silly, rowdy game. You can get into fights and use anything and everything around you to create as much chaos as you like. But why limit yourself to bars? They allow you to crash a wedding, get into a back alley fight, riot in a store, or even in a police station. Enjoy performing socially unacceptable behavior without the resulting obligatory visits to the hospital, jail, and courts. This only limits the mayhem, the only limits to the mayhem is your imagination and your moral decency. Now for the clip.
Hi, I'm Pedro Caia, CEO of VR Monkey and one of the makers of Drunken Bar Fight. We understand that it's crucial to show a full body representation of the player for a fighting VR game. And this is our IK solution for it. Check this clip and pay attention for five details. Outfoot pattern, upper body movement, elbow placement, and moves, jump and crouch. Now we have implemented it with Movement SDK. Thanks to the Meta News Movement SDK, we can now have a much more reliable IK tracking with Quest 3 sensors, and the player's position reactions are much more similar to what the user are doing in real life. Okay, I think that was a little too fast. Let's check it again. As you can see in this part of the clip, the legs of the player start to do some crazy movements trying to adapt the foot placement and look like he's trying to perform some kind of crazy dance. In reality, the player is just moving around normally, but the K algorithm goes nuts. With the movement as the K, using a new machine learning system called generative legs, applies a prediction for the foot placement that reflects much better than reality and creates the feeling of a being much more natural move. Now, let's talk another topic, avoiding perks. In your previous IK system, you can see that moving your head would result in moving your entire body, basically resulting in a step back, even scratching your arms in impossible ways. Now, powered by the technology of Quest 3, we have access to inside-out body tracking, which enables us to do a much better estimation of the movement of the player that results in the body actually leaning back, not only giving a step back. Also, what about elbow placement? Another big hassle we always had with IK estimations of the arm was exactly where is the elbow and what they are doing while the movement. Issues used to range from having elbows moving together with the hand position and getting into very abnormal positions. As you can see, with the inside out body tracking, we also provide detailed information regarding of the position of the elbows, actually positioning it in the place that they are supposed to be. These results are just much better and several poses are now just much more natural. A nice effect from implementing the movement SDK was that the whole skeleton of our player was now fully compatible with the hand tracking, captured by the Quest 3. Now you can not only grab the things around you, but you can also make any kind of gestures you want in the game. Thank you very much guys, have a great Meta Connect! You have heard a lot about these cool features that we're announcing this year, but that isn't all. We are also extending the reach of our face tracking beyond MetaQuest Pro with audio-driven speech facial animation. This feature and the other features described in this presentation will all be available in December. I hope you have enjoyed seeing some of the compelling use cases that have been created with these new capabilities from the Movement SDK. Please follow the link on this slide to get more information. We started off with the Einstein quote of nothing ever happens until something moves. With these new tools we provide you with with Movement SDK, we can't wait to see what developers will make happen with them. Thank you.